Good day. We've done a section on gases to get us ready for equilibrium and now we're really attacking the idea of equilibrium and it's a central theme for the rest of this course. So, so we got to remember that equilibrium, we tend to just go EQUM, all capitals, to abbreviate it. Consider a saturated salt solution, so I'll have to have a video of that later on. And you can check out and it'll be incredibly dull at a macroscopic level but at a microscopic level it's amazing so it says copy a diagram that'll be in another video right after this so it says macroscopically it looks like nothing's happening so what I will have done is I've dumped in way too many marble chips calcium carbonate and the maximum of calcium carbonate is dissolved, so no more can be dissolved. And so you'll see a bunch of calcium carbonate sitting at the bottom and what looks like water above it. And it turns out a fair amount of calcium carbonate will have dissolved in there. And every time some dissolves, some crystallizes. So it's a form of equilibrium. So equilibrium is dynamic. It means things are going on even though it often appears that they're not. In the case of the example I talked about, the rate of crystallization equals the rate of dissolving. So equilibrium applies to reversible reactions. So let's look at the conditions we need for equilibrium. All going well, I'll have a handout for you, but they're here as well. First of all, the system has to be closed. That means it's got to be a sealed system. It's got to have a lid on. And so nothing can enter, nothing can escape. The opposite reactions occur at the same rate. That means the forward reaction, every time it happens, the reverse reaction happens. You can reach equilibrium by starting with either all of the reactants or all the products or both. As long as you have one side in completion, you can get to equilibrium. Temperatures constant and other macroscopic properties will be constant. So if you had a certain amount of solid there, pressure, those kinds of things can't be changing. But one of the things we have to do is determine whether we're likely to have an equilibrium set up or are we going to have a no reaction or a spontaneous reaction. And that means we have to know about enthalpy and entropy. Enthalpy you should know about from grade 10 and grade 11. Heat of reaction, it's the delta H, it's the difference in energy between products and reactants. Now, just like grade 12 students, the enthalpy favors minimum energy. It favors the lower energy side. In other words, it favors the exothermic reaction. So all things being equal, if the forward reaction is exothermic, it's going to favor the products. If the reverse reaction is exothermic, it will favor the reactants. It says see a graph, so I'll make a graph of some sort. So let's just do, do a little bit of scribbling. A little P diagram like this. Boom, boom, boom. And a little P diagram like this. Boom, boom, boom. Oh, come on. So what this is saying is all things being equal, this reaction's endothermic. So reverse exothermic. This reaction would favor the reactant side in terms of enthalpy because it's lower. In this case, it's going to favor the Ford reaction because the products are lower in energy. That's all we're saying. Now we look at entropy, and it's one of my favorite things. Entropy is disorder, delta S, change in order. If you look at my front desk, it's a disaster normally. Not because I'm a slob, it's because I respect entropy. So stuff just over time just gets more and more scattered naturally. Well, systems tend towards maximum entropy or disorder. And you can kind of guess which states are the most ordered and which are the least ordered. The one that's most ordered will have the lowest entropy. 
So gases are crazy. So they're way, way, way more disordered than aqueous, where you have something dissolved in water. Aqueous is slightly more disorganized or chaotic than liquid. And liquids are way more disorganized than solids. Solids, everything is nice and row. All it can do is vibrate, highly organized. So now we can use this information to work out whether we're going to get non-spontaneous or spontaneous or equilibrium. So if we have exothermic and more disorder on the product side, our reaction goes to completion. Both of those things favor the products. Exothermic forward points to the right. More entropy on the product side favors the right. So if we have exothermic and less entropy on the product side, well, exothermic, that favors the right, but that favors the left. So they're pushing in opposite directions. So that's going to be an example where we get equilibrium. We're not going to have the reaction go to completion, but we're going to get some degree of reaction. So now we have to look at the two other possibilities. So here's number three. So it says endothermic. That favors the reactants. But more disorder on the product side. That favors the products, the forward reaction. So again, you have a tug of war. So that's going to be equilibrium. And finally, you can guess what's going to happen here endothermic still favors reactants the reverse reaction and less entropy on the product side means more entropy on the reactant side both things favoring the left the reverse reaction and that's a case where we get no reaction so we're going to apply these four possibilities and we're going to look at a bunch of reactions and figure out what's going on and you are simply going to add some arrows as we go along here. So we look at our delta H, and the delta H says it's a negative. That's exothermic. That favors the right. How do we look at this? Well, 2 is a coefficient there, 1. These guys are gases. We have 3 moles of gas there, 1 mole of gas there. So in fact, we have more chaos on the left. Arrows go in opposite directions. So we get equilibrium. Now the next one, energy favors the right. And it actually favors the left. The energy is endothermic, so it favors reverse reaction. Here we have one mole of gas. Here we have two moles of gas. So the disorder favors the right. Another tug of war. Another equilibrium. Now, this one, energy, we know it's exothermic, favors the right. Here we have three moles of gas, one mole of gas. That favors the left, favors the reverse reaction, more chaos on the left side. Equilibrium. So you're going to say, hey, I'm going to guess that it's always equilibrium. But that won't always be the case. When we look at this beast... We have more energy, or we have energy being produced, exothermic reactions, forward reaction. So the right side is lower in energy, so that favors the right. And we have one mole of gas, two mole of gas. We have some order there, but we got more chaos here. And so, like another equilibrium. Arrows going opposite direction. This one, you're looking at a physical change, but it still applies. Now the energy favors the left, disorder favors the right. Energy favors the left because the forward reaction is endo, so this is lower energy side reactants. But gases are more disordered, so that's an equilibrium. So we have five that are equilibrium. Let's see what we got on the next slide. Hopefully something different. Okay, energy favoring the products, exothermic. Now we have solid, 
we have aqueous, but the big thing here is we have gas for hydrogen. Both arrows go in the right, and that reaction goes to completion. You should know that. You've thrown zinc and hydrochloric acid somewhere in your previous four years of school, I would hope. In this case, it's endothermic, so it favors the reactants in terms of energy. Here we have two moles of gas, and here we have two moles of gas. So that is a draw. So we only have one arrow going to the left. That means no reaction. And this one, the energy is favoring the left. Reverse reaction, BXO. Very organized, very disorganized. So again, we're going to have equilibrium. Arrows in opposite directions. Now, that says it's exothermic, negative delta H. And here we have 1 and 4 is 5 moles of gas. 2 and 2 is 4. So that's got to be equilibrium. And am I out of examples? Nope. Well, we look at energy. Endothermic forward, exothermic reverse. This is the lower energy side. And we got solid, we got aqueous. Oh, the gas is on this side. Both arrows point left, so that's going to be no reaction. So you're going to get some assignments that look at this. By the way, this reaction, it shouldn't surprise you. You've thrown magnesium and hydrochloric acid. And you can see this arrow really wants to be pointing the other way. There's no way. And you might remember the activity series. So there's just no way hydrogen can boot up magnesium. So you're going to make a worksheet that looks at these and has questions like this, and you're going to work it out the exact same way as these examples, I think 10 examples.